YouTube, welcome in with midweek NWSL action, the Champions League final weekend NWSL slate. There are so much we need to talk about and look at some player evaluations. Plus, Lori and I are answering listeners' questions. Thanks, everyone who submitted them. We're going to talk about the goalkeeper position and what 23-player roster we would name today for the U.S. women's national team. Then, in the second half of the episode, we welcome a very special guest, CBS Sports analyst, two-time Olympic. Olympic champion, USA legend, Ali Wagner, all of this and so much more in today's USWNT hour. Like this video and subscribe to Attacking Third Page right now. Join the conversation in the chat. We want to hear from you. Hello and welcome into the USWNT Hour alongside former U.S. international Lori Lindsay. I'm Lisa Roman. You can join us live on YouTube.com slash Attacking Third every Monday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. You can join the conversation in the YouTube chat. You can also listen to all USWNT Hour shows on the Attacking Third podcast. Download, subscribe, follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere that you listen to your podcasts. Lori, happy Monday. It's great to see you. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I am great. I'm fantastic. It was a fun weekend of games. Um, and yeah, getting back into the groove of things. And it's a beautiful day here in Philadelphia. So can't complain. It is a beautiful day. Last week, what, we had like tornado warnings happening here in <laughs> Philly, and now it's like beautiful, sunny skies. I know you were calling games this weekend, heard you on the NWSL broadcast, fantastic job. But in, in Philly, we had like 95 and sweltering this weekend, and yeah. now it's like a lovely 70 today. But um, yeah. it was great to hear you on the call. I know some people in our chat are already saying that you guys are, you're killing it on the broadcast. It's so fun to hear you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back. I mean, we had a, well, I guess I was on... CBSSN about a week ago or so. Mm -hmm. so, but it feels, I don't know, the days are blending together, but this one, I had a multiple games in this weekend, um, down in Florida at the studio where we call the games. So fun to get some games in and, um, yeah, get back into the groove of stuff. It is always fun to get back into the groove of it. Speaking of, of the groove of things, we have a bit of a programming update for everyone who listens and watches to the USWNT Hour show. Next week is a holiday. It's Memorial Day. So we are moving the show from Monday to Tuesday. So we will be going live on YouTube next Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. And then, of course, you can always listen to the show as a podcast. But let's dive into today because we've got a lot to talk about. I mentioned all of the action this weekend between the Champions League and NWSL midweek games and then a weekend slate. So we've got to look at some player evaluation. We have a lot of questions that have come in from all of our wonderful listeners. So thank you everyone for writing in and doing those. And then we have a special guest in the second half of the episode, USA midfielder, analyst, legend, Ali Wagner will be joining us. Yes, double fist pump for Ali Wagner. Super <laughs> hyped to have her on and join the show. Before we get into it all, I want to remind everyone that we have a Paramount Plus gift card to give away during today's episode. It's $100. It's a full year subscription. All you have to do is like this video and then drop your social media handle into the chat without the at symbol. So mine will be LRoman32 into the chat and you get a chance to win. I'll pick a winner. I will DM you. This is huge. You can watch NWSL all year round and CONCACAF W championship qualifiers are coming up this summer. So you need Paramount plus to watch all of these games, drop your social media handle chat in ch social media in the chat and you'll pick a winner, but let's dive into it. Champions league w this weekend, it was Lyon versus Barcelona. Oh, well, they end up winning it all three to one. All four of these goals came in the first half of this match. It was a little <laughs> crazy, but let's talk about the U.S. players. Lindsay Horan, Kat Macario, 90 minutes for each of them. And Kat Macario, she nets a goal in this one. I mean, what, ca what can Kat not do? Frankly? Well, uh, right. <laughs> everything. She can do everything. Uh, yeah, it was, I think, you know, just a, a phenomenal display of, of soccer, um, the atmosphere. I mean, there's a lot of talk about the broadcast, how um, wonderful that was too, like a, a World Cup final oh, feeling, yeah. which, you know, it, it should be. It's a Challenge Cup final, um, two excellent teams that um, have really... Um, you called it the Challenge Cup final. It's the Champions League final, but I got it. We get NWSL on the brain. <laughs> I am so glad you caught that because I have been so mindful of that in the past because I keep thinking when I wanted to say Challenge Cup during the Challenge Cup, I wanted to say cha uh, Champions League. So I'm like all over the place now. Um, hilarious. But here we are. Uh, yeah. Phenomenal display of, of soccer. 
Um, you know, Leon uh, taking it to Barcelona, I think a bit shell shocked. I wasn't fully expecting that. I thought this was going to be a completely different outcome. Um, but you know what? I don't care. It was an awesome game. And huge credit to Lindsay Horan and Kat Macario, um, you know, becoming, I think, the third and fourth player to American players to play in a, a Champions. I have to be careful what I'm saying now. <laughs> Champions League finals. So, um, and Cat with a goal. It's awesome. It really it's is. Huge. huge. Um, mm. Cat playing a, a double nine almost at times with Ada Hedgeberger. Yeah. And really, I like seeing Cat so much higher. Like, this is it for her. I think her days in the midfield are gone. <laughs> like, well, listen, we're going to talk about this more, but I will. I think a little bit that maybe they aren't totally because I'm, she is obviously on my 23 player roster, but I also have bolstered the attack a little bit more because I think Cat can um, drop into the midfield when necessary so it's just that that played into part of my thing but well, yeah, you're right I think higher up the field is better think in saying what can't cat do yeah she can play up front she can play in the midfield but she's much more dangerous when she's up front I mean you're not wrong she scores goals <laughs> right she scores goals and it's it's fantastic and honestly I felt really fortunate um that we were able to watch that game. It was such a good game. Um, I, I still felt like even though they went down, Barcelona could have come back. They had their opportunities, right? So, um, but a great game plan. And I played with um, Sonia Bonpastor. She's a really good friend of mine. And when they came over here in August last year to play in the ICC championship, mm -hmm. she um, it was really great to see her. So, yeah, I'm really proud of her. Love to see that. Yeah, it was a really, really great game, and it was a great broadcast, how we were able to watch it. And and the fact that so many people tuned into this is huge because the game is growing, and and get on board now if you haven't already because you are for sure missing out. Let's look at the NWSL a little bit because midweek matches, a, a lot of them, there's four in the midweek last week, and then a whole slate of games this weekend, doubleheader on Saturday, quadruple header, I guess, on Sunday. But we saw a lot of different things. I mean, we've talked so much about some of the veterans. I'm going to start with them because Megan Rapino, she started and got a lot of minutes for OL Reign. Uh, Morgan, Alex Morgan scores a game winning goal. So that's six goals for Morgan in four games. And then Kristen Press, a forced own goal against Kansas City for Angel City to win. Um, and, and because of Morgan and Press, San Diego, number one in the standings, Angel City, number two in the NWSL <laughs> standings. I want to talk about these veterans a little bit because uh, between Alex Morgan, Kristen Press, Megan Rapino, and then Becky Sauerbronn coming back from injury. She got minutes in Wednesday's game, uh, started and then didn't play the full 90, but you can tell that Sauerbronn is also coming back. When you look at this slate of, of group of veterans that are getting so much consistent time in the NWSL, performing, producing for Morgan and Press um, and Rapino to come back from injury as well as Sauerbronn. What, what's kind of your evaluation of these ladies from this weekend? Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, we've been waiting for this, right? I mean, there's been a lot of oh, talk yeah. and really it's been, I mean, we've been talking about this for a while, it feels like. Um, and really it's been uh, Kristen Press and Alex Morgan, the ones that we have been talking about that have getting the most, um, the most playing time and producing for their teams. But um, it was just a matter of time for these other players to come back. I think it's great to see Megan Rapino um, back and healthy and getting the start for the first time this season um, in yesterday's game against Washington, which was a zero, zero tie. And I think it'll still take Megan a little bit of time just to, in terms of being in more, even more influential mm -hmm. in the game. And her team utilizing her in the ways that are the best um, that will showcase her talent, obviously, right? So, um, but a solid performance for her, I think, with Becky Sauerbrunn ba back, that's huge, especially with a Tieran Davidson out for Chicago. I mean, when you're just thinking about the overall picture, right, where does this put these players in the mix with the national team? Well, you know, it brings them back into what Blacko is wanting them performing consistently, mm -hmm. getting the minutes, and then he can evaluate from there and decide what he needs, right? Depending on what the team looks like and how other how other players are, are producing. But I mean, overall, not surprising that Alex Morgan continues to score. I mean, she is the focal point right now. I do like her better when she's more central for San Diego. I think she's more effective. I think she has the ability to, as we saw in her goal yesterday, split the two defenders, especially oh, yeah. when teams get... Um, an expansive shape, right? Like, I mean, Kurtz and Urseg, I don't think we're expecting the ball to be lost and turned over at that point in time. And then a great look for a Corniak. So, I mean, listen, and it, it was a clinical finish from Alex Morgan, Kristen press working her butt off, um, doing what she needed to do to force that own goal. Um, so listen, these players are doing 
exactly what you expect them to do. Scoring goals if you're if you're strikers, and then for the others, just working their way back and getting consistent minutes because they've proven that they can they can play at this yeah. level. So it's not you know are you are you going to be good? That's not the question, <laughs> right? It's just like okay, wh what form are you in? Can you stay healthy and can you continue to get those um, consistent minutes? Yeah, I think that's such a good point because, yeah, we know Megan Rapino can play and, and whip an incredible ball in and, and the vision. Yeah, she's going to be fine. And, and yeah. so is a player like Becky Sauerbrunn. But for them to get back and start to get those consistent minutes is positive, especially when um, we're looking at naming our, our roster because last week we probably couldn't have named Becky Sauerbrunn. She hadn't been played yet. So I'm excited to talk about that a little later. This is just a preview of our 23-player roster if we were naming it right now but there are some other players i want to talk about goalkeeper casey murphy for north carolina courage out with injury um mm -hmm. the entire challenge cup as north carolina went on that incredible run ended up winning the challenge cup and then it, north carolina hit with a bit of covid and casey murphy goes from um out to questionable moments before the wednesday game for north carolina she ends up playing in that wednesday match and then again with caitlin Rowland available this weekend the backup goalkeeper casey murphy is back in goal um I, I think she looked pretty good pretty mobile for someone who hadn't played for a lot of the months but is is this a player that's still in the u.s rotation because she played tremendously in november with the national team and then dealing with a bit of this injury bug we're just starting to see her back in action oh yeah i think this player is certainly in contention right and i think if she hadn't gotten injured then there would be a lot of talk um consistently on this show on who potentially would be the number one right um for me and and we'll get into this later but she's certainly in the three for a world cup yeah. contention and you know that's the broader picture but I, I definitely think she'll be called in for the june camp if she can stay healthy no doubt just given her performances she was solid again she's good with her feet right she's a big presence and even talking to sean nahas about her there's a confidence that she brings to her team caitlin Rowland, excellent job made some big saves when needed but there's another level with casey murphy and uh, no doubt they're number one so um just a really great strike for somebody like Alex Morgan against Casey Murphy, N nothing she could really do about that one after it was already a, a split ball through the middle. So yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I think it's good to see these players, as you mentioned, Annie Sullivan coming back, right, as well. I mean, this is what we need because this is about the time you have about a month or so before those Ju that June window um, for the next international break. And then you would imagine that's going to be a very similar group to what will be going to qualifiers or minus a few here and there, depending on what the conversations are with Vlatko. You're exactly right. Now's the time that these players need to be getting back into form. You mentioned Andy Sullivan. Uh, she was available for 30 minutes off the bench. She got time with Washington Spirit. But um, another player, Mallory Pugh, suffered a concussion towards the end of the Challenge Cup, missed most of the, the, the regular season up until this past weekend for Chicago Red Stars, and is available off the bench. She subs in at halftime immediately gets an assist and then notches two goals. Yeah. I think Mallory Pugh was itching to play. Yeah. Mallory Pugh. What a finish that was too. My goodness. Like, I mean, we aren't really seeing, there's two, there's two plays that stand out. And I don't know if anybody's like going to remember this one. There's when Megan came on, Megan Rapinoe came on for her first game, which would have been two, two Fridays ago, right? The very first yeah. game that she played Friday night game against Portland and Cascadia rivalry. She played this ball first time into the path of Ali Watt that you do not see many players play, right? Or we just don't see players play that ball. Um, and then that finish from Malpew. I mean, most people are striking that with their laces. It's just hitting on a rope, right? And it's either not hitting the target. And I'm not just like, you know, I, I'm just saying it is a clinical finish for Mallory Pugh to collect that ball, open up and bend it into the far post against a world-class goalkeeper in Aaron McLeod. So, I mean, we're these, yeah, it, it's good to see Mal Pugh back, especially suffering that concussion is basically the bottom line. Lisa, can we say hi to the people in the chats and then can we ask if, answer a few questions there? Cause I think there's yes, Lauren, okay. take it away. Hey Read everybody it in the got. chat. We love your commentary here and these questions. I do want to answer one because I think this is important. Um, it's TJ Trex was asking, do we feel I'm looking for it? Cause you've asked a lot here, TJ, where are you? Do we feel like Pino is better than the other forwards in play? Listen, when you, when you look across the board, all the, 
all of these strikers are great, right? And they bring a little something different. But what Megan does bring that's different is, and somebody else said it down the line, which I really agree with, which is like consistency and service, set pieces, and somebody that can step up. I mean, we saw it in the Challenge Cup semifinal against Washington, somebody that's subbed on in like extra time just to take a penalty kick, right? Because you yeah. know that she's in the in the most intense moments, she'll be able to... Um, put those away, right? And execute for you. And I think that is actually really important when you start to think about like makeup of teams and like, what does that look like? And we've talked a lot about experience and youth um, on this podcast as, as well in terms of finding that balance for Vlatko. But I also think you have to like look at who's available and who's similar and what types of um, strikers you want for your team and then have the best mix as possible because you're going to face a plethora of different um strikers or excuse me teams and defenses in in the world cup and in qualifiers so you have to be able to figure out okay who do you need in what games what's gonna what's the execution gonna look like and so that's why i'm still with some of these players like a megan rapino yeah we can talk about ages all we want right i mean we talk about you being old we talk about you being too young it's there's a sweet spot i mean who really cares like if yeah. you're 40 and you can be like let's look at Ibrahimovic, right? Like yep. He still performs. His role looks very different, but I mean, no one's over here worrying so much about his age, right? He just gets it done. And there we are. If the players don't have legs, then great. Yes. You cannot perform. Well, that will, be, we'll know that when the time comes, right? If somebody is falling down and they can't go great, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> but I mean, until that happens, then like everyone's in contention that has played in this level, in my opinion, because, I get it. like they yeah. bring a different role. Right. So here we are. It completely. The Carly Lloyd, I like it, Steve. Exactly, Steve. <laughs> I, I'm TJ Tracks. Thanks for that question. We have another one from TJ Tracks in the chat that we also also got on Twitter. Uh, this is a, a smooth transition to our question segment of this episode because if you subscribe to us on YouTube, you can drop your questions in the chat and on Twitter at Attacking Third. Reply to our mailbag tweets. Um, and we'll answer your questions. We get so many and we want to talk about them. So TJ Trex asked this one in the chat. And we also got one from the unathletic non-professional athlete. Uh, the unathletic non-professional athlete said, right now, my front line is Pew, Macario, and Press. But the way Morgan is playing, she's into. How would you use Morgan in... And in what ways will that change how you use Macario? Macario in compact games, Morgan in open games, Morgan off the bench. The struggle is real. And TJ Trax essentially alluded to the same thing. I'd like to see if Kat and Alex Morgan can play well together. What are your thoughts on these two in that central striker role? Well, I don't think we're going to see them as a central striker role unless Kat's playing more of the 10. Because right now, Vlatko Andonovsky has not given us any indication that he is switching this formation, right? There might be slight movements around in terms of like a bit more to holding in the midfield, depending on what he decides. But at this point in time, there's been no indication of any of that, right? So given what we know, then I don't see those two playing together in some sort of like number nine position. The one thing I will say, though, is we have, I personally like Alex Morgan better as the nine. And in that central role, we've seen her play that um, with San Diego. She seems to get the most goals in that position. And then also, or at least when she can start central and mm -hmm. then peel out and not vice versa, right? When she starts wider and then has to choose when she's going to come in central. So, but, and then with the national teams, she has consistently more than not played in that um, role when there's been a three front. And so I will say the one thing though, that's interesting is that because she's played in that wide area though, with San Diego, Vlatko could or could not be looking at her for that position as well. I just think right now uh, she is performing. I don't think there's any question like uh, he's not keep. I think he will absolutely bring her in. That was the whole point, right? If you're informed, yeah. she is no doubt one of the best informed players in the in WSL leading the league in goal scoring, then, okay, you, you bring her in. I don't think that's even in question. It's just, okay, who's the pairing again? What does that look like? And what we do know right now is Kat Macario has been performing in club and country like wonderfully right playing the best soccer in that number nine position essentially so right now i don't see cat coming out of that position now if you're going to move things around a bit then fine we'll see but like right now i see cat macaria playing that nine and then you might bring 
somebody like Alex Morgan off the bench or player in the wide position, right? So yeah. Is there any difference in between the styles of Macario versus Morgan in the type of opponents that it the US would be going up against, whether it's a really open game or a fast paced game versus a really tight, compact game that they're trying to look and break down? Do you see um pros and cons in Macario or Morgan when you look at the like technical tactical side of it yeah i ultimately think that cat is going to be better in that position as a nine it with like a team that's going to sit back a bit more right i think cat mm -hmm. is going to and i think overall depending i think cat could potentially be better at this point in time right now regardless of who's playing because she can play if it's in transition if there's space in behind she ha she has enough pace enough speed quickness to be able to get in behind and play off of a pew or whoever is up there with her regardless and then she also has the ability though to understand spacing and then peel off the back line allow for the midfielders to get through right whereas my opinion alex is a bit more of a post up player in that position and um, there's a bit more fluidity when there's tighter space in Cat's game in that in that case. But I mean, we've seen Alex when there's space be able to open things up. She can score goals like nobody else, right? So I yeah. mean, she's so it just depends. It depends on who you're playing with, who's underneath her in the um, in the midfield as well. It's Two pretty good decisions, uh, choices that Blacko has to choose from between those two players. Um, I, Lori, is there anything else in the chat you want to get out right now? Because if not, I want to know your 23 player roster that you are picking for right now. We've gotten a lot of questions about this and I want to know about it. The Antana Wiz asked about it. Steven Gagliardi asked about it. I know people in our chat have also asked about it. 23 players that are healthy right now on this Monday, May 23rd, that you are picking and putting on your roster. Yeah. Okay. So first happy birthday, Barry. I saw that early on. So we're going to give you the shout. All right. Well done. Thanks for being in the chats with us. Um, and there's some other really good questions. I don't think we'll have time today, yeah. but like, what's the best formation? I mean, I think that's an interesting, um, <laughs> I like this. And Lori's going to pick all the oldies. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> those experienced <laughs> players in there. Um, so, and, and so I think we should talk about that later on. Maybe what's the yeah, best yeah. formation for this team in, in another episode. And we can we completely, have yes. If yep. anyone has questions, um, drop them in the chat. I'll write them down and, and we'll get to them. Um, because yeah. I do want to talk about all these, but I want to know your 23 player roster, Lori, if you okay. have to here we right go. now today. So I kind of messed this up and you know that because I was like trying to look ahead and like go with my pick as like, um, like what this team would look like next year. Right. And I was trying to guess and it all depended on like who's healthy. Right. I know there's a ton of asterisks, but goalkeepers were the easiest for me. I know I'm probably going to get some stuff for not having Tillis Joyce on here, but I do have a listener. These aren't in any particular order either. Mm -hmm. uh, Alyssa Nair, Casey Murphy, and Aubrey Kingsbury um, for my goalkeepers. Because I do feel like those three, um, outside of Casey Murphy, has been injured. She's proven that um, she's very much capable, and I think she'll push the, for a starting spot. Um, and then it gets exceedingly more difficult, and I'm like all over the place. But <laughs> um, listen, here's who I have. Um, I had Tierna Davidson in here because I was looking ahead, right? She obviously is injured, so she is not going to be playing. So I'm going to have to like make some, I'm going to have to get some subs in here already. Right. All right. So I have Alana cook. I have Kelly O'Hara. I also had crystal Dunn. She's out. Goodness gracious. I'm having to sub her too. Uh, anyway, I picked, I picked seven. Okay. okay. So I have Alana well, we're cook. already down to five. Right. I know this is a bummer. <laughs> um, Alana cook. I have Becky Sauerbrunn. I have Kelly O'Hara. I have Emily Fox, Abby doll Kemper. And then I'm going to throw in that's two, four, two, four, five, Sophie, Sophia Huerta. And then because Tierra Davidson is out, I'm going with a Naomi Gurma. And right. that does leave a sonnet out, but my thinking about that. So that leaves Tierra Davidson who would be high on the list. And so would Crystal Dunn in that mix for me, if they were back and listen, I'm a big Emily Sonnet fan. However, I'm a big Emily Sonnet fan as a center back. And Black Mananowski has made it clear that she is not playing center back for the national team. And I don't think we get the best out of her playing outside back. So I would choose, that's why I'd go with at this point in time, uh, Sofia Huerta um, filling into that spot. Okay. I respect that. I was going to, my question was going to be about Emily Sonnet, not mm -hmm. having her there. So on, on mine, I have actually the same goalkeepers as you, as you, okay. Alyssa Mayer, Aubrey yep. Kingsbury, and then Casey Murphy that 
three was very easy to pick. Um, and then back line, essentially the same. I have Emily Sonnet in there, and I did not pick Abby Dahlkemper. Interesting. Um, she's it, technically a little injured right now. Yeah. Hasn't been playing that much with San Diego and hasn't uh, – honestly, when I watch Dahlkemper and Naomi Gurma play together – for San Diego, I think Gurma is doing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, Doll Camper has the experience and she has the tenure to do that. But really, I think Gurma is the future, especially when you're out with a player uh, like Tierna Davidson that isn't playing in that back line. If you pair and Be Becky Sauron coupled with the Naomi Gurma, I think that could be a really good pairing. And yeah. to get her in now is it's good. Yeah. Well, listen, I agree with that. I, I've really grown into enjoying Naomi Gurm. I thought she had a great game the, um, yesterday. Now I'm losing my days. Um, but I do think it, I do think if Tierna Davidson, and this is all hypothetical because it's not tomorrow, right? And she's still injured. But I do think it would be a, ultimately a Tierna Davidson, Alana Cook pairing back there. But I have Becky Sauerbrunn in there because I actually think regardless of Becky's age next year, if she can stay healthy, um, I think that she is a, a voice between Vlaco and these players. So it is almost like a uh, player coach and you know what you're going to get from Becky. And if she's partnered even with like somebody, there's just good organization. So I, I have Becky going all the way. We'll see. Report yeah, back in a year's time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll report back for sure. Okay. <laughs> 52, 52 Mondays from here. Um, <laughs> All right, midfielders, we got to go. All right, so I've got Andy Sullivan. I've got to figure this out a little bit too. I have certainly Ashley Sanchez, uh, Lindsey Horan, Roosevelt. I have six of these because I put in an extra um, attacker. Uh, I do have, well, this is where I messed up because I had Sam Mewis coming back. I have my fingers I crossed. I have her, her as well. I have her as well. But you know back. what? She's not there. So we're going with Jalen Howell as well. And then. Listen, I might have to leave this one blank right now because I'm not – I also am a huge fan of Chrissy Mewis, and I just want some more. So she's not on okay. the list. I'm going with five. I'm keeping them off. We're going with 22. Wow. So no Chrissy Mewis. Um, Sam would be on the list if she was healthy, and you're throwing in Jalen Howe. So is the toss-up between, like, a Chrissy Mewis and a Jalen Howe because Howe wasn't on your list originally? No, how was it on my wrist orig originally? But I do see some things that I'm starting to like a bit more from her game, and it also depends on who she's paired with, which is like is pretty is pretty like that's tough, right? Because like you got to be able to just play regardless. Yeah, totally. And I do think partnerships are a real thing, and you don't always just play the best players if it doesn't mesh. But um, but this this is. I have an asterisk there because I'm not totally convinced about it either, but it was, you know, I'm looking across the board and there's some, I don't see a ton of depth there right now. I'm looking at all the rosters on the NWSL and I'm just, I'm not seeing it. So yeah. this is where I think Kat Macario would be interesting to also drop back. And then um, how Andy Sullivan, I also do have some asterisks by Sam coffee. Cause I've talked about her in the past and also Savannah DeMello. This is early stages, everybody. Right. So <laughs> listen, I don't want to be getting quoted like what did Lori say 52 weeks ago, but those two players I'm keeping my eye on because I think that are interesting prospects and they've had some really good starts to the season and they're doing some different things than other rookies are. Um, and just in terms of their like calmness and the confidence yeah. that they are imposing on the games that I think are beyond their years that compared to some other rookies. So, um, you know, what? keeping my eye on them. Who do you got? I, I like that a lot. I got Lindsey Horan, Roosevelt, Ashley Sanchez, Andy Sullivan. I got Sam Mewis on here. I know you cross her out, but I think she's back. I think she's just waiting. And then I have Christy Mewis. I think that she will perform differently with the national team than she does with Gotham. I think there's a little too much pressure on her. I mean, she should be performing with Gotham. Don't get me yep. wrong. But yeah. because she should be doing what she's not doing, there's a lot of pressure on her. And with the national team, I think she can perform and 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 execute there. So that's who I've got in the mid. All right. This is my favorite my favorite lineup here. Okay. Your forwards. Okay, yeah. So I was, um, well, I real quick, I know we're rushed on time here, but like the one thing too, I do like Christy Mewis a lot. Like she brings something different. My and I've always said that, but there's gotta be something more too. I think that has if you it's gotta be more, right? And I think yeah. if you are gonna be a national team player and Gotham needs six, they do need to expect more from her, right? She is their go-to player. Like, let's go. Come on. Yeah, I know. Um, 
Exactly. Okay. That's what I mean. There's a lot of pressure on Christy Mewis to to be that player to step up. And frankly, we haven't seen it. Well, that's what I'm saying. So step up, yes. Mewis. Let's go. We you need your team needs you. Let's go. All right. So forwards. Um, so the way that I looked at this, my my forwards, people are going, I was like, ooh, the chats could be off the walls with this one, right? Because I actually, <laughs> you heard it here first, everybody. Went projecting to the next World Cup, I didn't even have press on there because of just the mix of strikers that I was looking at. And ooh, I'm going to get some big time. Okay, Kat Macario have. Um, Mal Pugh, no doubt. I have Trinity Rodman. Um, Alex Morgan. Sophia Smith. And then, listen, I know she's injured. Um, <laughs> senior citizens. <laughs> I, I am. I'm all for the senior citizens. Let's go, team. Um, okay. Um, I also have Lynn Williams. I know that she's injured. So, um, Lori, you can't pick people that are out. I well, See, remember I told you I predicted FBI. for next year. So I'm just telling you these are, have, listen, so Kristen Press would be on there now. Okay. If it was right okay. now. Okay. And, um, I would put Megan Rapino on there for her ability to close out games. I'm not saying she's a 90 minute starter. Please don't misunderstand. Yeah, Abby Wambeck, let's get her out of um, <laughs> the retirement too. Lord, um, we're gonna throw you in the midfield if this is if this is how it works. Yeah, now. senior citizens. No, come on. <laughs> I've only picked like two senior citizens, everybody. Um, so Kat Macario, Mal Pugh, Trinity Rodman, Alex Morgan, Sophia Smith, and Megan Rapino, Kristen Press. Those would be seven. No Ashley Hatch. No Ashley Hatch. Because I think it's, and again, this is why it's really tough and exciting as well. I think Ashley Hatch performs. I think she gives um, Washington something different. However, when I think she is a true out and out number nine. And so really is Kat Macario, except you can play her elsewhere. So you can drop her back when you make a sub. And right now, I do think Alex Morgan is performing better than Ashley Hatch. So, and okay. I was, those would be the two that I would take there. Mm -hmm. But I have Ashley Hatch. Don't worry. I have her asterisk. Right okay. There. Okay. Yeah. I'm so glad the asterisks are there. Those are our substitutes <laughs> when the roster gets expanded. Gosh, yeah. what, what's the point of making rules for the games we play well, here? Because I told you, the I, there, because when I was <laughs> looking ahead, that it all depend on healthy and injury. And I wanted to make sure I was covering all my bases. So Lori, it's go. your show. We're just yeah. here to hear your thoughts. So I'm yeah. all for it. I love this. Pew Smith, Macario, Morgan, Rodman. I agree with all of it. I have press on mine and I've actually hatched on mine. I left off Megan Rapino. Um, I, I want to see a little bit more from her before oh, I get I her in there. I think that's a completely fair shout. hundred yeah. percent. I am totally bringing though, when you look across the board and having something different, Megan Rapino would bring something different than every single one of those players outside. Yeah, actually, every single one is a winger. Oh, she would yeah. be really okay. good than everyone so i think that's what you have to look at though yes no i agree yeah. completely yeah it, we got to look at it i love this and this was rosters as of today so some asterisks in there with injuries but this was a great question i love our question segments thank you everyone who writes in gives us question like this video drop your question in the chat you can tweet at us at attacking third um leave us questions for next week's episodes because we love these give us fun scenarios rules to play by Lori may or may not play by the rules but we'll see and we'll have fun with it we have so much more in this episode coming up an incredibly special guest is waiting in the wings right now and we will get to her right after this very quick break greetings aviators this is your captain speaking where the hell is he what the hell i'm right here maverick the kind is headed for extinction smoke in the air smoke in the air maybe so sir but not today Top Gun Maverick, rated PG-13. Welcome back to the USWNT Hour Show. Lori Lindsay here. I'm Lisa Roman. Uh, before we get into our next segment, reminder, I have a $100 Paramount Plus gift card to give away. All you need to do is drop your social media handle without the at symbol in the chat. I'll DM you if you are the winner and you get a $100 Paramount Plus gift card. Like this video, drop your social media handle in the chat. I am so pleased and excited to welcome to the show two-time Olympic gold medalist, a CBS sports analyst, former teammate of Lori Lindsay, and one of the greatest to ever do it, USA legend, Allie Wagner. Allie, welcome <laughs> to the show. 
Wait, does that mean I'm a senior citizen as well? If I'm yeah, we all are. Of Laura Lindsay? Is that how yeah, we are, are totally okay. senior citizens. <laughs> no one is a senior yeah. citizen here. We are so lucky to have you guys with us. Um, Allie, you've been waiting in the wings. I saw you making some faces, some arm gestures about Lori's 23 player roster. I was spot. hoping you were in there. I, I was, I was yelling the so loud and you could not hear me. It's, does, the, does the tree make a noise that falls in a forest segment? Uh, I sh what Megan Rapino? She's played like five minutes this season. What are we talking about here, Lori? Well, we're, we're, because we're handing out um, placement on rosters for past performances. What, what's happening right now? Yeah, we are actually because not everybody okay. has stepped up. <laughs> All right, listen, you... I, go ahead. You tell me. Listen, this is the best. This is why this is so great because Allie and I have this argument all the time or like debate all the time, I should say, about who should be on with the last few players. I feel like we I feel like we totally agree on like the whole. And then the last two, I'll throw some name out and you're like, absolutely not. <laughs> and it's my favorite thing. It's a like favorite I thing mean, I am glad you're not our manager because you'd be going, who's my favorite person to hang with? All right, let's go. It's a long month for a World yeah. Cup. I need you by my my camaraderie size. camaraderie yeah. Exactly. Yeah, not for the manager all right <laughs> this is this is performance um, based this is uh, women's football show yeah, me no what doubt. you got megan rapino i'm sorry not yet not now so ali ali who would be your front line right hatch, now for the hatch US? would be in there hatch would be in there i'm with you lisa um i honestly haven't broken but it would down you take by... three but would you take, th this is my thing though, because I'm looking at it the way that I look at it and it's not like, like oh, I'm just want to pick Megan just for, for shits and giggles, everybody. Like, no, I'm, the way that I look at it though is like, okay, across the board and with the subs that you have available, bringing the most balanced front line, right? And who's going to bring something different? In my opinion, Kat and, Kat and Alex and Hatch are not anything alike. I get that. Alex and Hatch would be more similar. And Kat has obviously been that starting number nine and you can drop her deep. But then let's say right now with performance wise, Alex is coming off the bench. I, how is Hatch getting on, on the, um, on the field at that point in time? Right. I, I think you, like, I, yeah, but I, I think first of all, you did say you have some balance. Hatch brings balance. Kat Macario brings balance. And, and I think that with Alex, you need a player also that can play well with the other players. I think Hatch does a little bit of that, even though that's not her strong or skill set. We've seen the relationship that is developing between her and Rodman, and Ashley Sanchez. Those yeah, are certainly. really important factors, I think, going into, into a world tournament where you now national team doesn't take priority, NWSL takes priority. So you're getting reps with each other outside of national team training camp. Pew's in there, Smith's in there. And I would even look at Morgan Weaver. Um, of course, who's the other? Uh, what what about between winger. like Press and and Morgan? Press, Pre I Press. take I would take Press right now, and that's because she is a different winger. That's a a player. Again, you have a little bit of experience out of there, and and team chemistry matters. So only those on the inside know whether that's the right decision. But for performance, I would still take Press. When you look at Alex Morgan, she's in good form. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not um, dropping dropping her hot and fast but three of her six goals have been penalties so yeah, even though yeah. we can say six goals in regular season right now three are penalties so i start to scratch those off the list she didn't even draw those and, penalties yeah exactly so so when you look at it mallory pew 45 minutes two goals one of them kind of penalty ish um but she's right now leading in, in goals per minute so I, oh. I i just i think you need a fresh i think you need um fresh faces turnover and, yeah. and you do need some experience, but I don't know that yeah. it's got to come necessarily from that front line. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, we're all on the same page. This is front line is like my No, we're not. Right we're taking Megan Rapino. We are not on the that's, same page. That's, we're not on the same page as that, but everything else in terms of experience, getting fresh faces on there, no doubt, right? Like, I will debate this to the end on terms of a few players that I think should go over others, which I feel like would be, yes, internal stuff, who's the best teammates, who's getting stuff done, who's holding the team together for sure. Um, but there's no debate on terms of Macario or Pew. Like, I would, those two would for sure hands down right now be on the front line and then that third one would be a little bit up in um up for debate for me um and who what that looks like sophia but, smith macario and pew like done yeah it's yeah done. you know what i feel like as of late though with sophia smith um there's a there's a bit of a question in terms of like could i go with a trinity rodman or somebody now okay. sophia smith though 
at the national team level right now, I'd choose over, um, over Trinity Rodman because she's performed at that level. Right. So, yeah, yeah but that's yeah. where I, that's where I go with the toss up in terms of like a Sophia Smith or a Trinity, depending on again, who you're playing and who's also on the, yeah. in the lineup to your point about those relationships. Right. And yeah. that's why I'd also have doll Kipper in there because you talk about Germa in the back line. Those two are getting consistent Agreed. minutes together. Right. So that, and, I mean, that is just, and you look down the, I think when you look down the spine, I actually, oddly enough, that has been the strength of our team historically, but that is where we're the weakest. Yeah. And so when you, there isn't depth no in the midfield, there is no six and, and center back without Tanner Davidson, you know, it looks a lot, it looks really thin. Yeah. So I think this is where Vlaco starts to need to be a bit creative. We've, I've talked about Alex Luera getting a sniff. Uh, maybe in the sixth role. I, I know she doesn't have reps under her belt, just getting season NWSL, but players like that, you mentioned Sam Coffey, I'm all for it. I mean, you've mm -hmm. got to start bringing in some of these players that maybe you're not, you know, you're not uh, certain of, but they need to start getting reps at the national team level. Uh, so maybe when, when the time comes, they are ready. Yeah. So the time, I, the time coming is June. There's an international window coming up right. just a few weeks away. And then when we look even a little bit farther down the road, July is essentially World Cup qualifiers in the CONCACAF W Championship. Are you bringing in players like Sam Coffey, Jalen Howell, uh, Alex Luera there, Allie? I, I would bring them in, not roster them. I, I think this is where you utilize the, the financial backing you get from U.S. soccer and have them in training camp and have them go through a qualifying experience. And and some of these things should have been done in the past, so we're not yeah. talking about it with this next generation. Like, this is <laughs> going to be their first World Cup qualifying experience. But that ship has sailed. So now it's about, I think, you know, starting to look forward towards the future. And, yeah, absolutely getting these people involved in, in intense environments like qualification. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 much changed since when we qualified, Lori. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, listen, and we saw how that went even in 2010 when it was like, dear God, we might not <laughs> even qualify. So, I mean, listen, that's what I keep saying on this. There is an interesting aspect to this of like a lot of the players that have performed, uh, to your point, the spine, right? Like I'm going through all these players and looking all over the rosters today and I'm like, listen, there's not like somebody that I would immediately call in that I feel like has grabbed some of these positions, right? Even when you talk about Andy Sullivan. But that's why, to me, even if you're going to bring at this point in time, for, whether it's June or um, in in July for qualifiers, you might not have you might bring in some extra like older players, senior citizens, everybody um, <laughs> that might not play a ton of minutes. And I think that's fine. But they're at least going to hold the group together for qualifiers. Right. And I think that's important right now that I think of that's where I think of a Megan Rapino and a Becky Sarabun for sure. Right. Yeah. But and, here's where I'm here's where I'm calling you out on that. It didn't happen at the Olympics. I mean, but listen, for, hold up. By all accounts, so, internally, it was not good. And those people were there. So, yeah, well, exactly. But my question to that, though, is how many players were not good and how many of the internal ones were trying to hold it together? So that's my only pushback, right, from what I've heard and some things. So I think there are some players that were hold, trying to hold it together. And there's a bit, few more voices that maybe were, um, you know, shaking some things up to say it, to say it the and, best, right? And so. wouldn't you say, it'd be fair to say those players have been included in, in the rosters. So I think we know who some of those faces were. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, no doubt. So I think that's why yeah. I think I fine, right? And it's like, yeah. who, who knows what this experience is like to at least get the job done. And then, you know, the senior citizens can be gone, right? After <laughs> qualifying. And so so the qualifying <laughs> roster looks very different compared to the World Cup roster. I wouldn't say very. I don't say. I think when we say very different, Allie, Allie, actually, you're our guest. Here. You answer this first because I'm like over here chit chatting. So you're our guest. The the World Cup roster looks very different from the qualifying roster. No, I hope not. Yeah, if, yeah that's how if I you feel. do it right. If you do it right, it should be very similar, and you mm -hmm. always have. But but this is what I love about the development of the women's game. I uh, think about men's game. The qualifying rosters change dramatically from game to game based on on form, based on health. That is how it should be in the women's game. So when we're talking about Megan Rapinoe that hasn't been playing, sorry, like no, let's move Agreed. this yeah. game forward and let's start to rely on younger faces, players that haven't necessarily been in the trenches yet, and let's give them a platform and say we believe in you. Now go out there and prove it. I, I just yep. think this is like the time to go on form, go on health, and and I think you start that in the qualification process, especially in one that is rather forgiving in Concacaf. You know, this isn't this isn't um, UEFA over here. This is Concacaf, and this is something we should be able to manage. Yeah. Well, okay, a one hundred percent across the board. But what I'm saying is because of what you just said a few minutes ago, which is we haven't brought those players in. We've only been playing friendlies against like 
Uzbekistan, right? And this is very different. Qualifying is very different. And yes, CONCACAF is forgiving, but we're going to see potentially um, a lot of different scenarios, right? Like what do the fields look like in terms of this, right? Yeah. Are they watered? Are our teams going to sit back? Like there's going to be the smallest little details that some of our players aren't going to be used to. And historically, we have not performed well against teams that sit back. And how do we break that down, right? We even, there were some struggles in uh, just a few months ago at the She Believes Cup. So regardless of any of that stuff and how I agree with performance and what that looks like, I'm just saying at this point in time, it would be beneficial to have a few faces that have been there that understand what it takes. Right. And then to your point as well, I don't think that there should be much turnover going into the world cup, but there will be depending on injuries and performance wise and potentially age We'll look very different. Is Allie not on with us anymore? Yes, yeah, she she just froze and she just left. But I was listening to her rant, Lori. I mean, yeah. this is fantastic. This conversation is amazing. Uh, Everyone in our chat is uh, siding with Allie in this one, Lori. So, um, oh no, I think that's totally yeah. I am. Allie, they're saying that she has she needs to have a direct line to Vlatko and Anofsky, Allie. That way, that's what our chat's saying that you need to speak directly to him I, because he's got all the answers. I understand that people do not want like the senior citizens. I get it, right? My pushback, man, that is all. Oh, you're dying on and I, I no I we're we're actually not debating in terms of like whether the, if it, we should be going off of performance I 100% agree in terms of pushing but the reality is with our team who has a lot of expectations and we even get all the questions is like I go have much more time what what are these conversations right like yeah. it, we just the way that it's resulted is in terms of going after the back-to-back -back, trying to win the world cup and then back to the olympics right then losing a year we have a shortened time period now for a team that has a lot of expectations on their shoulder and a lot of players that are performing very highly in our league, but don't have a ton of experience at the national team level. My only point is against teams that potentially are going to sit back or are going to have some soccer savviness in them. That does not mean that we don't, but have we haven't faced some of this stuff collectively as a group. So in, in that regard, I would bring in a few players that have that experience, even if they don't see time, right? Who I believe behind the scenes will elevate what's happening, right? Not hinder it. That's, That's my only thing. thing. That could be like your Kelly Kelly O'Hara. That could be Becky Sauerbron. Uh well, yeah, um, that's what, Becky is the one player outside of, and then I also mentioned a Megan, right? Like that, those are those are the two, because the other two that you all have agreed upon is a Kristen Press and Alex Morgan. Those are the only other two that we'd be concerned. No one else on this. We're talking about senior citizens, so. yeah. but you're also you're also talking about Sam Mewis. Oh, Sam Mewis, There's I didn't even. I only put in there um, for next year if she's available. I actually didn't have her as a current current yeah. player. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's dealing with a bit of an injury. So I, I love this, I yeah. like this Sam? Be, and this conversation a is time. fantastic. We get a lot of questions about this. Allie, I want to pose a question towards you that actually was prompted okay. by one of our listeners. Um, Lori has answered this before. So when you look at the U.S. front line and, and all of the players for 2022, this year that we're in, who is going to be the leading goal scorer for the USA? And, and that can be any one of these players that have been called in or not because we don't know the roster for June yet but when you look across the board between Press, Morgan, we're going to throw Rapino in there. We've got Smith, Pew, Macario. Who's going to be the Are you talking one? about international goals? You're talking yes. about league goals across all comps, international. International and USA goals. Okay, so this is where this is where my answer is going to get a little bit detailed. It depends uh, we're going into a soft it, we're going into a soft um qualification uh tournament more than likely which means players are going to rack up goals that maybe ordinarily wouldn't against a tougher competition so given that i would lean towards there's a lot of Mal options here. I, i'm leaning towards mallory pew um i think she stays healthy knock on wood um and i just think you know her ability against opponents in in tight spaces her ability against opponents with a high line she's got that going for her i think she's i mean she's been a little bit more of a goal poacher than i've ever seen her be uh, over the past year or so so i would go with her i think sophia smith not clinical enough yet ashley mm -hmm. hatch if she got enough playing time i'd put up there because i do think she's such a poacher don't think it's necessarily going to be macario i think she's going to do a lot of the assisting I draw, That's attract a lot of attention. Okay. 
I, I mean, I it's think, it's fair. Yeah, I think that, and and I like the Malpe shot, like a shout out because I think that's extremely fair as well. I mean, I think, I mean, her finish yesterday, right? Like she is like she's finishing balls that like what I was saying is we don't really see anybody else right now. Just the like, except Ashley Hatch. Ashley Hatch had a very well, similar one, but I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes, sometimes Ashley Hatch. Right? Oh, and also yeah. Morgan. I mean, she's well. Washington Spirit. You should Morgan. be like leading that. Listen, way. I I have to like cool my jets a little bit with the Washington Spirit, right? Because right, I'm like pro right. them all the time. Time, right so you know i gotta <laughs> pretend like i like some other teams here um one of my favorite comments i think was this sean motors or motor city sean who's like i agree with ali except for weaver so i'm just joking about weaver <laughs> <laughs> sean um, you're gonna come around all right yeah yeah no i like I you know think- what i i'm a i'm a weaver fan as well i'm also a bethany bolster fan um i think th- i think you call in a number of players that could do mm-hmm. well in the system right seriously weaver's like a young morgan to me yeah um, Lisa, did you, who did you think was going to lead? Um, yeah, I, I honestly split between those two, Pew and, and Macario. I'd like the point you make Allie about Ashley Hatch. If she gets enough time, because with the time that she has been given with the U S she just is on the field she for scores. two minutes and she scores a goal. So yeah. like if we're talking pure quantity of goals could be hatched depending on the minutes and depending on, as you mentioned, the, a little bit of softer competition that the U S is going to face heading into this summer. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing that we guess probably have talked about a ton, but it was just when we're going over this roster, to remind me, we need the refs and then have to step up and protect these players, keep yep. them healthy, because yep. it's been hairy in some of the in some of the matches that we've seen. Yeah. This is a whole conversation we could talk about the refs. Allie, we'll get you back on for that one. I want to ask you a question, though. We mentioned Lori. She's high on her Washington spirit. She does try to calm it down a little bit for us. But for you, as, as a former player, um, you played with the LA Soul. And now there are two California sides in the NWSL. Uh, but Angel City being in LA, I see the fist pump. How special yeah. is this? Well, first of all, I think we need another one. Um, so it's let's great. Get one, we're just let's get one um, in Philadelphia first for Lori and I for now. Come on, then we'll work on it. You guys are East Coast heavy. We need to balance it out. We need regional. We need regional <laughs> yeah, playoffs. Yeah, we do. We do need regional. We were looking so, at the standings yesterday, and I'm like, this is an eyesore. It's just like 12 teams just packed in there. Like, right? let's get some exactly. divisions. Yes, yeah. let's go. Uh, we need the Bay, but. But it's awesome. I mean, it's so good to have California teams back in it and and doing so well. I mean, I know it's early in the season, but I love seeing them, you know, sitting at the top of the table and and just the way they've done it. I think obviously Angel City in particular, changing the business model for NWSL franchises and, and really raising the bar, making everyone else step up. So that has been probably the thing that's made me smile the most. Um, San Diego's done it incredibly well on the pitch. I think when we look at expansion sides and and the style of play, the quality of play, they've been incredibly impressive. So I both get total wins for me um, for different reasons. I love that. Yeah, San Diego has been impressive to watch. They're fun defensively, very organized, higher up the pitch organized as well. Um, and we talked a little bit about Alex Morgan. She's getting goals that are mostly PKs, but hey, they're still getting goals. And and San Diego yep. is number one in the standing. So a goal is a goal is a goal in the NWSL. And it counts despite anything that happens. There was also a little bit of, I don't know if either of you saw it on the Orlando free kick goal against Chicago red stars. Was uh, Amy Turner offside on that free kick? Did you see that? I actually couldn't tell. I I saw it. I know. I didn't get, uh, I didn't have definitive evidence. Let's put it that way. And if that's the case, let the goal stand. Give it, give a center back some love. Very PC on the definitive evidence. I love that. Allie, we didn't get enough of you throughout this conversation, and we've hit our hour here at 4 o'clock. We're going to have to have you back on this USWNT hour because we have a lot of fun here, and we want you to join in with it. Before we go, though. You need a voice of reason. I I was just about to say, I need to throw out some some more, like, ridiculous – pick up for myself and then get Allie to debate me here. So yeah, no, what shoes joking. you got on. You got yeah. a Hugh Hefner shoes on. That's uh, what no, I, need I, got to my, know. I got my slippers. Exactly. Actually, Hugh Hefner slippers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love it. And everyone that drops in their questions. Thank you so much for it all. Final thoughts from either of you besides the Hugh Hefner slippers that you got going on. <laughs> Lori, yeah, you no, first. Uh, we do need to come back on because it'll be fun though to once we get a better idea of maybe what the, the next international break roster will look like um, and break it down and like go into like why we think what yeah. Flacco was thinking and why. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, we'll yeah. just put words in his mind. Yeah. <laughs> You're the direct line. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 
Hatch. Yeah. Don't it's worry, Blanco. I'm not going to share your number. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. it Thank hatch. you. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and joining us. Allie Wagner, this was such a treat. Thank you for joining us. If you like this video and you dropped your social media handle in the chat, look out for a DM from us because you could be our Paramount Plus subscription winner. A final programming note next week will be Tuesday. We'll be going live on YouTube from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. It'll be Tuesday. You can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third for more. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and all the places that you listen to your podcasts. Subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube, catch our interviews and get alerts from when we go live youtube.com slash attacking third and we'll be back next tuesday for another uswnt hour ali thank you for being here and everyone thank you so much for listening and joining us yeah thanks guys thanks for having me